In each of my portraits, I try to tell the story of the life of the bird, the difference between the male and the female, their habitats and where they live, their favorite foods, and I do believe the yellow-billed cuckoo is a perfect example. Let me ask you, what is the cuckoo eating? A butterfly. A swallow-tailed butterfly. Now, I ask you to look very closely here at the leaf, and you can see tiny black specks, the eggs of the tiger swallowtail butterfly. It only lays its eggs on a member of the pawpaw family. And so this is a pawpaw tree in fruit. Now, I did not paint the eggs or the caterpillars, but look more closely. What do you see here? The leaves have been eaten by the caterpillar. Now, knowing that the swallowtail only lays its eggs on a member of the pawpaw family, and you can see that the eggs have hatched and the caterpillar has eaten this leaf, and somewhere it has transformed itself into a chrysalis, which has metamorphosized into the adult butterfly. Here, you not only have the story of the bird, of the insect, but you also have the relationship, the food web of the forest all captured in one exquisite painting of the yellow-billed cuckoo. We have three members of the same family of birds. And what family might that be? Woodpeckers. They're all woodpeckers. And I will challenge you to look more closely at these three different species of woodpeckers. What are some of the differences that you see between them? What are the obvious differences? Size, coloration. And can you be more specific when you say size? Some are larger than others. Some are larger than others. And color? The size of the bill is also very important. Tail fan. The tail fan, yes. Now, what are some of the things that all three of these birds have in common? Stripes. The color patterns, though the colors are different, the patterns are very similar. Their food source. Maybe? They're all woodpeckers. We know this, and so they peck wood looking for Worms, insects. for insects and grubs and beetles. What else do you know? Yes, if you look very closely, you will see that they have opposing toes, that their lower two toes oppose the top two to give them additional stability as they're hanging onto the bark of the tree. And if you look more closely still, you mentioned the fan of the tail. All of them have a pointed tail. And this pointed tail is used to help them cling onto the tree. Kind of like a tripod, their opposing toes give them additional strength, and then their tail stuck into the bark allows them to hold on quite firmly while they bang their head against the tree. <laughs> and one thing you cannot see, but I discovered in my dissection of the woodpecker, their brains float. And like a shock absorber, they can bang their head against the tree all day long without getting a headache. I would not recommend that you try this at home. <laughs> As an artist, so as a scientist and as an artist, you took the time to focus. Merci. Many, many things that we are not seeing today. Well, in part because I spent literally thousands of days in the forest of America, thousands upon hundreds of thousands of hours, often dozens of days studying a single bird and learning its nature. Every bird that I painted, I wrote their biography the ornithological biography, published in five volumes, which they do have one of the volumes on display, and we'll talk more about it later. So in each of my portraits, I try to capture the drama, the art of the bird, as well as something scientifically accurate. And so thank you for noticing this.